Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a statistical mishmash here, mainly concerning the United Kingdom, but I think it'll be no less of a video for that because I think there's some quite interesting statistics here. And I want to start off with some of the statistics that I used when I made a video recently regarding Stefan Molyneux and atheism and look at some of those statistics from a slightly different perspective, answer a concern that was made with regard to that, then draw on some other statistics from the British Social Attitude Survey and also some other statistics also done by the YouGov who've done the statistics that I used in the Stephen Molyneux video with regard to whether Britain is a Christian country and then make a little bit of analysis with regard to that. So a little bit of a mishmash here but I think this is quite interesting stuff. So first let's just have a little refresher of those statistics that I showed you, just, and just show you a little bit of a twist on some of that. Remember it was a survey uh, carried out by YouGov for the Times following uh, the general election, previous general election. I'm not quite so interested in how the political parties voted now, but remember this. First question that I looked at, what is your religion? 42% of those said they had no religion. 49% of those said they were Christian. And bear in mind, I said these statistics were a little bit different to what you would see in the census. But then that when they make the census, what they say is they're not really interested in people's religious belief. They're interested in cultural identification because that's what local authorities are interested in. That is what they want to know. But what is interesting is if you tally some of these numbers up, Right, because you would think that nearly all you, what your initial expectation would be that all the atheists would come from that no religion band. Uh, at least naively, that's what you would expect, that all the atheists would be contained within that. And yet of those within that 42% who said no religion, only 45% of those said that they were atheists. Well, 45% of 42% is about 19%. So only about 19% of the population going by that, working through that means of doing it would associate themselves as atheists. Yet when we look at the question further down, people have different beliefs about God, which of the following best applies to you? Not only did only 32 people say that they believe there is a God, but look at this. I do not believe in a God, but believe in a greater spiritual power, or I do not believe in a God or greater spiritual power. Both those two categories would make you an atheist if you don't believe in a God. You can believe in a greater spiritual power, that's no problem whatsoever, as long as you don't believe in a God or gods. So 53% of the population there class as atheists, yet when you look at the number, the percentage of people of no religion who regard themselves as an atheist, you only get 19%. So there's a little bit of a schism there. So as I pointed out in the original video, those statistics don't quite tally up there. But it's a little bit more interesting than all of that. As I said in the original video, there's this really kind of amazing situation where there are quite a lot of Christians in the United Kingdom who don't believe in God. And if you compare that, if we have a look first at the situation, it'd be really interesting, just have a look at the situation in the United States because it really throws this whole thing into a very, very stark relief here. Gallup have conducted surveys for many, many years since the 1940s when they've asked the question, either do you believe in God or for a number of years, do you believe in God or a universal spirit? So what I've done is I've amalgamated the two tables because they asked the question, do you believe in God? up until the uh, end of the 60s and in the 70s, 80s, up until really quite recently, uh, they asked the question, do you believe in God or universal spirit? And now they've again gone back to the original question. So I've amalgamated the two questions, but you can see that for the whole population of the United States, consistently more than 90% of Americans believe in God or a uh, universal spirit. Now have a look at these statistics for the United Kingdom with regard, do you believe there is a God? And this is just Christians. This isn't the whole population. These are just Christians. And in the United Christian, uh, the United Christian, in the United, that would be a Christian country. In the United Kingdom, even amongst Christians, only 55% of Christians believe in God. The mind kind of boggles there, doesn't it? But 45% of Christians either don't know or, well, 23% of them don't believe in God but believe in some kind of greater spiritual power. And 9% of them don't have any truck with any of that shit. 9% of them don't believe in God or a greater spiritual power whatsoever. And that's the Christians. 
in the United Kingdom we're talking about there. Now there's some really interesting graphs that uh, were created by uh, YouGov to go with all of this uh, which show the age range and how it differs across the age range and that kind of gets me a little bit onto the next part of this video. So let me show you these graphs. The first with regards to religion and you can see the no religion column there is in the green and uh, have a look at how this is worked and then in the blue we have the Christians and look how as we go through the age groups uh, each each age group the greater age groups have a great deal more Christians and the 60 plus 68 percent of those are Christian only 26 percent of those don't have any religion whereas those statistics more than reverse in the 18 to 24 60 percent of those in the 18 to 24s have no religion and only 22 percent of them uh, are Christian so Christianity appears to be dying on its ass net there now what it could be on the face of it is that people just uptake religion more as they get older uptake Christianity more as they get older but I'll show you a little bit on that when we get onto the British social attitude survey in a few minutes time that is mirrored with regard to belief in God again in the 18 to 24 category 25 percent of those in the 18 to 24 category believe in God and that steps up with each age group until we get to the 60 plus with 41 percent of people believing there is a God um, and the same thing with not believing in God or a spiritual power that drops down from 46 percent down 36 33 24 so we get the same thing going on it seems that the younger generation have much less uh, much less religious and have a much lower belief in God than those who are older and it, as I say, it'll be interesting to look at why that is as we get a little bit further on uh, in the video. But one of the interesting things that was discussed with regard to Stefan Molyneux, one of the interesting responses that I got was this idea. Well, what I got back was what I'd said was the United States is atypical, right? That, that um, atheists line up maybe more on the left uh, in the United States and Christians on the right in the United States. Uh, but that is atypical. If you look at a country such as you have in Western Europe, you find that it's much more politically mixed and that atheists tend to span the political spectrum, as you can see on these Yugo figures here with regard to conservative and Labour. They have similar numbers of people who don't believe in God. It's almost neck and neck. And one of the responses I got back is, well, that is because countries in Europe are further generally politically to the left. Uh, than the United States. So effectively what has happened is perhaps this was the suggestion that was made by a number of people was that the reason that politics in Europe is further to the left than politics in the United States is because we're a less religious bunch and is because there are more atheists. If you have more atheists in your country, if you have less religiosity, then you're more likely to be more left wing. And that is why Western Europe tends to be more left wing uh, than the United States of America. But this is the fly in that ointment, which is that if you go back to the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, we have what is known as the post-war consensus where Keynesian economics dominated uh, UK economic thought, where nationalisation was the way forward and both parties on the left and right were committed to nationalisation, where tax rates were sky high, the highest rate of income tax was 70 and 80%, the highest rate of tax on all earned income was an astronomical mind-boggling 98%, where trade unions, and I'm a, somebody who's in favour, champion of trade unions, but trade unions ran riot and ran the country ragged, in fact we had a 3J, three day working week, we had general strikes, in fact the International Monetary Fund had to give the United Kingdom a loan of over £2 billion, which was the largest loan they'd given to any nation in the world at that point because our economy was dying on its ass. And then things changed, and it changed actually with Margaret Thatcher coming to power and that consensus ended. And in terms of economics, for both parties, politics moved to the right, tax rates fell, the powers of the unions decreased, uh, uh, nationalised industries started to be privatised and we had this free market perspective which has carried on with modifications through 
uh, to the present day. And that also impacts on some social areas and attitudes towards welfare have changed and maybe moved to the right. Although in terms of perhaps some social freedoms, in terms of things like the way we would view homosexuality or race or things like that, maybe we've moved to the left at the same time. But generally politics has moved to the right. And yet whilst politics has moved to the right, levels of religiosity and belief in God have plummeted. And to show you that, to highlight that, let me show you a little video uh, that the makers of the British Social Attitude Survey have created that shows you how levels of religiosity have changed since 1983. Yeah, so I find that really interesting and I think that puts to bed this whole idea that it's the rise of irreligiosity and it's the rise of atheism perhaps in Western Europe that's pushed politics to the left because it seems that in the United Kingdom that the very, very opposite has happened at the period where the rise in irreligiosity or the decline of religiosity has been at the fastest pace and the uptake of atheism has been at the greatest pace has coincided with this movement, especially economically, uh, of politics to the right. So that's the very opposite of what is being claimed there. Now, I'm not suggesting there's some kind of correlation working there. I think the two things are entirely unrelated. Now, the other thing that that same British Social Attitudes report, which was in the BSA Survey 28, and I'll give you a link to that one, uh, gives us a little bit of information on is this idea, this thing we saw before in the YouGov survey, which is that the older people they are, uh, the more religious they are and the more likely they are to be Christians. And is it as a function of people getting older? Do people just become more religious as they get older? And we can kind of understand why that might be, right? Because as you get older, you're getting closer to death. So maybe you're looking for something to cling on to. Maybe that's where it is. Or maybe being old is more linked to being set in ways and traditional values and all those kinds of things, which might chime into the idea of cultural Christianity or something along those lines. But the BSA pretty much puts those ideas uh, to bed. And it also makes channels like mine seem like a singular waste of time in terms of trying to change people's minds. Let me show you the data from the BSA. So here we have a cohort analysis, which we can conduct because they've been asking the same question between 1983 and 2010. So what they've done is they've divided people not into age groups, but in terms of when you were born. And what you find is, is that levels of religiosity remain the same within each cohort. So people don't seem to be getting more or less religious as they get older. So if we look at those people born between 1926 and 1935, in 1983, 24% of those uh, claim not to have a religion. And in 2010, 27 years later, exactly the same. 24% of those claimed to have no religion. And as we go through the cohorts, vertically there through the cohorts, we see we go 12%, 20%, 25%, 30%, 39%, 55%. 30%, 35%. That is how it steps up. But as we go across the cohorts each time, so we're seeing the same group of people, the same band of people, but just surveyed at different points in their life. We see that the level of religiosity remains the same. If we see in the 56 to 65 group, it's 55%, 47%, 46%, back up to 51%. It jiggles about a bit, it jiggles about a bit, but that isn't what is accounting for the gap. It's not people losing their religion or people becoming more religious. It's just that each future generation, each generation that is born seems to be less religious than the generation that came before it. And that seems to be the story of what has taken place in the United Kingdom. And that has taken place whilst that politics has shifted to the right for the, for the interest of people who are watching this after having watched the Stefan Molyneux video. Now, YouGov, who committed that original survey, one thing that they were interested in and they commissioned a year before was that David Cameron, the Prime Minister, had made a statement that the United Kingdom is a Christian country. So they decided to ask some people about the fact that the United Kingdom is a Christian country to see what they had to say about it. And it's very, very interesting, the data that they got. So first they asked people, do you regard yourself as belonging to any particular religion? 50% of those said no. 
I don't belong to any religion. Th only 37%, just over a third, said that they belong to a Christian denomination. And when they asked people how religious, only 23% of the population regarded themselves as fairly religious or very religious. The vast majority of people, 77% of people, regard themselves as not very religious or not religious at all. So there's very, very low levels of religiosity. And of those people that are religious, only 37% of the entire population uh, regard themselves as belonging to a Christian denomination. Despite that, when those same people were asked, is Britain a Christian country? 55% of people said they regarded themselves uh, as regarded Britain as a Christian country. And 58% of the population said Britain should be regarded as a Christian country. Now, this is the last bit that I want to focus on here. Traditionally, the way that this is interpreted, I think, is that what people are answering when they answer this is that they don't regard themselves as a Christian in the main. Only 37% of those do. And a lot of those who regard themselves as Christian, as we learn, don't even believe in God. Only 55% of those who regard themselves as Christian believe in God. And most of them aren't taking their religion very seriously whatsoever. Right? It's a very, very small percentage then of people who are both Christian and taking their belief seriously. And yet they believe that Britain should be regarded as a Christian country. And the explanation is, is because they believe in, they mean in cultural aspects. They mean in terms of moral aspects and the way in which they regard a lot of the fundamentals of our society as Christian in origin. And so it's almost like a statement of wanting to preserve the status quo and the character of the country rather than anything else. And I am sure there is an element of that that is involved in that. But what I want to propose is there's something else involved in that. And that there is a kind of a lack of informational awareness here, which is that people see themselves as not Christian in the main, or if they are Christian, not taking it very seriously. And they see the same thing with the people in their circle of friends and the people in their locality. But they assume, because it's kind of what we're told, that the nation of a whole, that, that our group somehow is not representative of the nation of a whole. So they assume, if you live in the country, you assume that, well, people in the city, in the inner city, they're probably a lot more religious than where I live. And people in the city presumably think, well, people out in the sticks, in the suburbs, in the country, they must be a lot more conservative and a lot more religious than the people where I live, because the people where I live don't seem to be very religious whatsoever. So I think that the answer to this question about whether uh, Britain is a Christian country and ought to be a Christian country is related a lot to a misconception that people have as to how religious and how Christian everybody else is, as much as it is a desire to cling on to the status and the nature of the United Kingdom as it is. That's what I think. I'm interested to know if you see a different perspective to that or if you think that I'm, I'm drawing a false conclusion from that. Well, I hope this has given you a little bit. I've drawn together statistics from a, a number of sources there to try and show you how the situation is in the United Kingdom. And also, of course, to highlight just how different it is to that situation that Gallup reports in the United States, where well over 90% of the population from decade upon decade, it's hardly changed at all believe in God. Okay, well, thank you for watching. I hope you've got something out of this. Bye for now.